Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to show you iOS 9. Apple revealed or unveiled iOS 9 at WWDC today, and so I thought I'd show you what that looks like. Now we have the iPhone 6 and the iPad Air 2, both of which get some pretty nice updates, so I thought I'd talk about those first on the iPhone 6. So let's slide this out of the way, and we'll zoom in a little bit. And here we have the iPhone 6. Now the iPhone 6 with iOS 9 is basically a lot of back-end updates, things that really make it more secure, more stable, which is a great and much needed thing. But one thing they did improve was some apps. Now there's an app that's not on here yet called News and they showed it on the keynote, so be sure to check that out. But their News app aggregates information, sort of like Flipboard or Pulse or any of those different apps that you might use. It looks really nice, but it's not on the beta yet. Now on this particular version, we have an updated Notes version. And you can see there's some scribbles here. I was playing around with it, but if we go back, Maybe we'll create a new note. And what we can do is type in here, but if we hit this little plus button, we've got some other options. So we can create a checklist. We can say, do stuff. And we can check that off. Uh, we can scribble below. Maybe we wanna put a little doodle in here. Say hi. We can throw that in there. We can also throw in photos and everything else as well. So it's a really nice, simple addition to what Notes has. So it's just some extra things you can do and you can do it quickly. They've updated Maps as well. So let's go into Maps. And now it gives suggestions and things and we'll show you that in a moment. But here's Maps and I was in here before, but what we can do is go into the search bar and this also gives suggestions based on favorites or different things you might wanna do. So maybe we wanna have some fun and it says, what kind of fun do you wanna have? We wanna to go to the theaters there's some nearby theaters. We can obviously go here and find their website and different information. Really, really handy and definitely something I'll probably use in the future for sure. They also added some transit information. So depending on what city you're in, such as New York City, I believe London, some of the bigger cities get the transit information for their different public transportation as well. So that should be really nice. One of the other apps they updated is Wallet. Now Wallet is basically the replacement for Passbook. So I'm not gonna go into that. It's basically the same thing as Passbook, but they redid the icon, called it Wallet, and then also added the ability for you to add some different cards from stores, such as Kohl's and JCPenney and Dunkin' Donuts and Walgreens and those sort of places so that you can have your rewards cards in there with staples, all sorts of things like that. You can add them in here instead of having to carry them with you. So that should be really nice as well. One of the features I can't really show you is on CarPlay. They've actually made it wireless. I actually don't have a CarPlay enabled stereo, but if you have one in your car, you can now use it wirelessly, which will be really nice through Bluetooth. So that's a really nice update as well. Now Siri has been turned into sort of a Google Now competitor, but not really. What it does is keeps it secure on your device, and that's pretty nice as well. But what it does is basically sees what you do uh, a little bit, not quite like Google Now. It doesn't leave your phone. It only leaves your phone anonymously to gather certain information according to Apple. So instead what it might do is see that in one of your emails, if you allow it, uh, it will see that maybe when you're searching for something, you might have a contact in there uh, that it can use for the phone. So maybe someone calls you with a phone number that you don't know, it will pull up that phone number based on maybe it saw it in an email. But you have to allow all of these things. But Siri can also be a proactive assistant in that it can tell you to do things such as this. Remind me when I get to my car to bring my keys with me. Before I can do that, you'll need to change your location services settings. In so location services settings, so if I turned on the settings, it would actually know where my car is parked as it learns over time, just like Google Now does. But now you can do reminders about things like that. You can also do things such as show me videos I took at different dates or different pictures you've taken at certain dates. So you could say, show me pictures from last June, and it would pull up those pictures. That should be some really nice things that you can do. Uh, and it seems to be a little bit faster. It has that new animation. Let me show you. What's the weather tomorrow? So the animation at the bottom is nice. It's a little bit of a redo of that. And it also will do things 
Say you get up every morning. This is one of the examples they showed. You get up every morning and maybe you want to go for a run or something like that. And you play a certain playlist every time. Well, when you get up around the same time, it will notice that you do this regularly. Once you plug in your headphones, it might pop up that playlist for you. So it's really nice and intuitive that way and pretty secure in that it doesn't really send any information to Apple. It's all kept directly on the phone. They've also improved iOS to be faster. Now we won't see that probably in the betas, but it's a little bit faster. They've also given it some better battery life. As you can see, here's the battery. They have a now a new low power mode, which if I flip this on, you'll see, uh, it actually will turn it into low power. And what it does is it extends battery life. So when it's on mail, fetch background app, refresh motion effects, animated wallpapers, anything that basically can use more battery over time will be disabled and you'll get a lot more battery life. They say up to three hours, but you'll also get an extra hour of battery life just from normal day to day use. Supposedly they also, like I said, made it a little bit faster and improved security. So security now requires a six digit password instead of a four digit. And that basically gives you a million combinations instead of 10,000. So there's a bunch of different things you can do with that. It's really nice and they've improved that. And we'll see more updates like that in the future. One of the things we won't really see too much of is smaller, more convenient updates. So the updates don't have to be too large anymore in order to install on the phone, unless you're doing betas like this. So aside from the iPhone, there's some pretty nice updates on the iPad as well. So let's move over to the iPad. We'll turn this on its side here. Here we have the iPad and one of the things I've been wanting for a very long time that is on the iPad is multitasking and true multitasking. Let me show you that on the iPhone real quick. If I double tap, you can see it's a little bit different. So if I slide these off the screen, it's nice and fast and it looks a little bit different. Same on this screen. We can go to my website and maybe we want to do something else slide in from the side. And here we have notes. We can slide that out of the way, or if we slide in from the top, we can pick something we want in this space, such as the clock. Maybe we want the clock to match the side here. We can slide this and resize. And now we have multitasking and they're both real in real time on both sides. So none, none is frozen. Nothing like that. Maybe I just want that to the side. Again, slide from the top, go back to notes, and then maybe I want that out of the way. So really nice, simple thing you can do as far as multitasking. Now they've done one more thing with this in that they allow you to play video at the same time. Now I can't show you some of this for copyright reasons, but let me give you an example. If I were to play this video, uh, it will do this if I double tap. So if I double tap, it will shrink this down. I can resize this window. I can set it to the side so I can just listen to it. Maybe I want to bring it out here go into a web page, keep using the web page. I can do that as well. So really, really nice. And I can just push play or I can bring it back to full screen or exit it. So something I've wanted for a very long time, picture in picture is what they call it. Now they've updated the keyboard a little bit too. As you can see here, the keyboard now has cut and copy and paste things like that. They also give you a trackpad so you can highlight a little bit easier. So watch the cursor up at the top. You can highlight, it turns into a trackpad. Now I haven't used this, this is the first time of using the trackpad part, but let's try it here. Maybe define this. They've made it a little bit easier to copy and paste, but the two fingers down turns it into a trackpad and you can move around whatever text dialogue you're in. So that's pretty nice as well. They've done a lot of little enhancements like that and you'll find some more things throughout uh, but that's pretty much the majority of one thing I thought was pretty interesting is they're going to make the change so that iPhone can now easily be moved to from Android. So if you have an Android phone, there's going to be an app in the future that allows you to download the app and then simply and wirelessly transfer all of your data from your Android phone to your iPhone. And that means all of your data, such as bookmarks, mail accounts, calendars, wallpaper, songs, camera stuff, messages, contacts, everything. It should move securely and wirelessly. So that'll be really interesting to see. So there's some neat little things and they'll make some tweaks over time. I'm sure they're using a new font throughout. It looks like, and there's a lot of nice little things we'll find. And hopefully it's just way more stable and is a better overall experience. It's not bad now, but it just keeps getting better. So that's pretty much iOS nine, at least for now. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.